Hello. Hello. Alan Jones. Yeah, that's my real name. Yeah. You've got you've got more names than <laughs> a notorious criminal you have. Yeah, no, it's crazy. No, my real name, uh, why is the video not up? Right, there you are. Okay. So yeah, my real name is is that cuz uh yeah. <laughs> cuz uh yeah. Oh, it's the name I was born with, you know. <laughs> right, uh, and okay, and so what um, is your preferred? Um... No, all right, so Alan Jones, I guess, is just the name that's just I was really born with, but I changed my name for YouTube because because I have a family and I was going through custody issues, custody battles, things like that. Yeah. So I really tried to hide the just that from my personal life. Okay, so what do you want me and other members to refer to you as? Jalen? <laughs> no, Mark's fine. Mark? Well, I mean, you've put Jalen up on your uh, profile, so you might yeah. want to change that. You no, might want to put yeah. an email people can contact you on. Yeah, no, I recently did that too, because um, Jayhun was originally my rap name, and that was just my, this new YouTube channel was originally my old rap music channel. So it's like, it was still old, like, it was just still that name. Um, but that's what I was, I've been rapping as that since I was 11 years old. <laughs> I came up okay. with that one. So do you, do you want me to call you Alan? No, nah, Mark's fine. Mark, okay. So, um, <laughs> what the fuck? Um, so uh, to save any confusement, uh, I suppose uh, I'd best change that on the, um, the database that we've got. I'll put it to Mark. Uh, cubensis uh, or mark do you want to, me to put something else mark so it sounds a bit more realistic <laughs> no mark dreams is fine because uh, that's, that's really why i changed it to mark dreams and that was really what i planned on keeping and um it's just jay hun was an old name that i had a long time ago uh you know and i've had a lot of uh, until you said that i never noticed that that i've had a lot of different names over uh, the years. Isn't that curious, you know, how we can live our lives not knowing who the fuck we are? And, well, I mean, it, it's, it just proves that we are not our names. <laughs> yeah, it, um, and it, um, it, it, it certainly throws a spanner in the works when we um, use several. Uh, that, that, no. that, 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 that's for sure. And um, so, okay. Well, what I want to do is, I mean, if you're okay with it, I want to do a video uh, to introduce you to the other members. Because as you may be aware, I'm absolutely desirous to get us all communicating. Because like you say, with all this bullshit that's going on, we, we're going to be defeated, Mark, unless we fucking get together. Because we ain't doing it on our own. And so we need to come together, we need to group our resources, and we need to face this face on, because they're running rings about, around us. And so with the amount of people that are getting closed down and compromised in every shape or form, there's a whole frenzy, uh, as you know, on, on YouTube of, of stuff that's going on. And people are moving over to Steam it, moving over to, to uh, DTube, and uh, you've moved on to another platform. What's that platform you're on? I've moved to minds.com and um, I'm also on BitChute. I don't fuck with BitChute as much as I should, but I've been really messing with minds.com because I can see that they're, uh, they're trying to lead the fight to free, like, you know, free speech and all that. They're trying to be the first social media site that has like, it's all about the people instead of the site, you know, like. Yes. And um, so there was another one that um, Paul uh, referred me to today and i'm not quite sure whether it's it's mines it's it's got very big names on it's got um stefan molyneux and uh, we are change and many 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 it looks very professional and if these guys are going over there you know this shit's proper coming down mm -hmm. and so let us start then with the, the introduction to yourself you uh, have um one site now, it's called Mark Dreams. You've had to create it. It's a YouTube site because your previous one was taken down. Yeah. So um, what, what was your previous one called? <laughs> the previous one, like originally it was called Mark Cubenzies, but then I changed it to Mark Dreams. And the one I have now is technically called Mark Dreams 2. Um, 
just, you know, just because it was the backup channel, I had to turn my music channel into my backup channel. But yeah, I'm still uploading on there. But I'm also uploading on Minds.com as well. Um, everywhere else besides YouTube, I'm trying to make my um, my thing Mark Mark Dreams 25. So basically, like Instagram, I'm on Instagram Mark Dreams 25. I'm on um, you know BitChute Mark Dreams 25, uh, and just everywhere else I'm going to spread out. I'm also going to make a Twitter. Um, like I'm just gonna st- I'm just gonna spread out towards the internet and all of those I'm trying to be Mark Dreams twenty five so it's just easier to find me. Okay, cool. So one thing that you might want to do is to put one of your videos, i.e. that one I commented on. I think that's a great video it's telling people what's going down these days. You can post that in your um, mm, profile page uh, as your introductory video. And so if you put your uh, um, contact details i.e. Skype and the email that you know you're going to get stuff. This is obviously if you want to be communicated with via people on my site. But um, people on my site, obviously, they're kind of vetted. I've, I've vetted everybody. And I, I, I dumped about uh, 15 people today because they, they didn't want to put the face up and they didn't want to communicate. And so in view of the fact that we've got a high security risk these days, I, I don't want anybody on the site who, or, or I don't know. Anybody that doesn't come forward to communicate with me w- within the next week or so, I'm seriously going to look at um, letting them go because uh, there's... First and foremost, there's, there's no point. The whole premise of this site is to communicate. For fuck's sake, communicate, people. Just say hello to people. Write a few texts. If you're busy, I'm busy, but I really am desirous to speak to you and you and you, whatever. If you just um, have a blank um, profile and nothing's happening, we're not interested in, in you. So that's why I've just, just let these go. I just deleted the fucking lot of them. And so we, we're starting on the premise that we, we want to go forward with. And we're very desirous to communicate communicate and work together because that's the only way we're going to do this thing we ain't doing this on our own and we ain't doing it by being shrinking violets peeping at the world from behind the fucking curtains you know mm-hmm. no i agree and i really think that i think my problem is i guess it's probably all of our problem a lot of people get stuck in their their own bubble get stuck in their life everyone gets busy everyone you know that's everyone you know but we do have to just kind of break out of that and just say fuck it because the only way we can this is going to work is if we work together like it doesn't matter how much knowledge one person gains we could all like individually we can know the fucking universe but like we have to connect and in, in, in order to actually i feel like make the difference we want to we actually want to do <laughs> because i can see I can see a lot of us, like a lot of the psychedelic community, we all have, even though we're on different paths, we have different intentions, different whatever, we have a similar goal. And that goal is getting interrupted from what's happening, what's going on in the world right now. And like, we're trying to be silenced, but together, it's a lot harder to silence a lot of people than it is to silence one person. Yeah. And so we are being silenced. And so silencing ourselves through our laziness or what have you um, is playing their game. And, and so what I want to do is, is I want this site to be a hub of uh, people such as us who are fighting for the freedom of speech to do what we want with our minds, with our bodies, You know, these motherfuckers that um, want to put you in a cage if you try to experience a different level of consciousness. You know, when you look at that, Jay, you have to seriously know that there is an evil presence permeating the whole of this world and absolutely, completely and utterly, it's the last thing they want. That's why there's such high prison sentences just for taking DMT, just for taking magic mushrooms. If you pick magic mushrooms in England, you will go to fucking jail. If you pick them at the fucking ground, a natural thing, it could be a daisy, you know, it's no difference really. Um, And so that's it. You're not even allowed to pick them, you cocksuckers. That's what they're saying to us. Don't even fucking think about it. We'll put your ass in, in, in a fucking cage. On the basis of that, we've got to fight this motherfucker because this is just the beginning. And like you were saying in, in your video, there's, there's nothing new here. It's um, from Socrates and, and Plato. You know, you know, look exactly what they did to Socrates. And so this is what um, they've been doing to people who have tried to enlighten the people. 
um, many, many of them, you just look across the board, just take the metaphor of Jesus, you know, whether he ever existed or not, just take that metaphor, they killed him, they killed Gandhi, they killed um, Martin Luther, you know, they, they, they killed John Lennon, they, 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 can, they will kill everybody. And, and so we, we've got to do something now, which is going to counteract this. And so yeah. if you... Uh, c create your profile on this site, then that will allow people to see exactly what you're doing, see what you you stand for, and get a level of communication. Because, like I say, I'm going to be drawing people which are far bigger than us, uh, hopefully onto this site, and then w w they will have a presence, and then hopefully I will have a presence on their site. And this is the whole thing, you see. We we've got to keep joining it up. We can't just be so busy doing our own thing because I don't know whether that's really going to work at the end of the day. We have to know who else is in, in this army against uh, the suppressors, you know? Right. Because if it's just you, you know, busy, 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 uploading, tap, 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 and looking at what comments you've got, and all of a sudden they close you down, it's kind of like, well, who do I call upon for any help? Does anybody know what's going on here? Can anybody give me some advice? What platform, this and the other? And so this is what I'm, I'm looking at. I want to, to, to draw people who know about all these new um, platforms that uh, can talk about the security issues and um, any number of things pertaining to it. Where's best to go? And um, how, how do we group together with strength and in numbers? That's what we have to do. Yeah, <clears throat> because it's, I, think, I think the only way to do it is just to do it. Like, really, it's like, you know, it's just we just got to do it and we just got to get over. Um, I guess the, they kind of designed it, though. So it's hard for us to want to get out of our shells you know i mean that's the way they want it to be they they did all this censorship all these things i mean like channels get deleted all this it's all to stop the communication and it's all to like to put us in that mindset where it's like well fuck it you know i might as well not even do this anymore they're just going to delete it anyways and a lot of people are thinking like that a lot of people are already conforming to what they want conforming to not even talking about psychedelics anymore going on with their life about everything else because so they can keep their channel or so they can keep their fans or so they can keep and i think that's the issue though it's like we have to just break away from that and just continuously do us it doesn't matter you know we can go to minds.com we can go to bitshoot we can go to steam it or, or d2 wherever else you know whatever but like dtube can possibly do this in the future as well i mean so it's like you, we have to we have to kind of we, we have to work together basically because one person can go to DTube but in five years DTube could do this and then they lose all their stuff for the second time with a second website. Yeah. So it's like we're definitely gonna have to come together to like um, get everyone's opinion on things. You know, where it's not just like five people agree with DTube and ten agree with this and twenty agree with this and you know we're definitely I think just connecting and talking about this and seeing where you know if if there's any other sites because I only know about four of them. So I know yeah. there's problems. The, the more people we, we speak to, the, the more, you see, by me looking at your channel, then I've uh, become privy to another one. And so this is the whole thing about it. Just keep uh, in communication with people. What I actually think is going on is, you see what's happened with um, YouTube. They have been bought, and I don't care who you hear on the media who has bought them out. We know who's bought YouTube out and it's the hidden hand. It, it, it's the fucking shapeshifters or the lizards or whatever you want to call it. It's these that, uh, who have done it. And, and, and of course they're going to do it and they're going to do it to every single platform, which um, gains a momentum and is a platform for freedom of speech. They're going to buy it up and they're going to stifle the speech instantly. And so look, this guy that set up DTube, he's just an unemployed French bloke that um, was, was, was uh, working for Steemit, had a relationship with Steemit, and uh, between jobs, and um, so he thought, well, I'll, I'll set this up. Can you imagine if this takes off in five years' time and somebody offers him $5 million? Is he going to take it? Of course he's going to take it. So therefore, every single platform that is going to be coming in to the people, which has been created and governed by the, the people, is going to be subject to them. What I think actually has to happen is it has to be something like a Bitcoin platform where nobody can fuck with it. It does whatever it does via 
the input that it gets from humanity. This computer system, I don't know how it works. I don't know whether anybody really knows how it works, um, Mark, but the, the thing is, it can't be fucked with. You can't be compromised and you can't be turfed out and this, that and the other. And so somebody was speaking about Steamy and DTube listen and, and they're saying well these it's unregulated well it's not exactly unregulated because what happens is is you can flag up and flag down somebody's content and so if you put up a video that, that the vast majority of people don't agree with and they flag it down then the um, algorithm will remove that video so it is actually being overseen and governed uh, but you see I don't know how many people you need to actually flag it down in relation to how how many people flag it up you know and I don't know how that works I don't think anybody does know how that works but something has to govern because if you've got a platform which is is open and anybody can put anything up then you can get snuff movies you can get child porn you can get um, any number of um, abhorrent human behavior being promoted and so if it's a site which anybody is privy to, you can't have this going on. You can't be looking down for one thing and then you'll get some disgusting fucking thing pop up. Uh, that's going to fuck with people's heads and it's not right. And so I don't know how it's going to go. But one thing I do know about it is that as soon as they get big, as soon as they get popular, then they're going to get bought out and they're going to get closed down. Because these people that are owning the world, 90 odd percent, uh, of the world's resources and media and all the rest of it, of course, they're not going to stop. Right. That's just, I don't know. The only one I can see that might be different is minds.com, but that's because the guy who makes minds is, is trying to do it. He's trying to be like, is, the it, first is it minds as in but, mind or yeah, yeah. okay. Right. So, um, but like his, his intentions are different. Like it's, he's, he has even the messages on there, for example, are encrypted messages. So like when you go into your messages on minds, it's a separate password than it actually is to get into your minds account. And it, it's like encrypted. So I don't even think the, the owner of minds, I don't even think he can read our messages because it's encrypted in the way he made it. But like, he's also trying to set it up where you get points on there, but you could turn your points into Bitcoin um, he's working on doing that because he's working on connecting it. Exactly what you said. Like, I think they're, they are probably working on the blockchain that, which is, you know, like the, um, the internet that's made with the same technology as Bitcoin. Yeah. And, if, and I, I just, there, it's being suppressed though is the issue. I mean, Google is basically running a fucking full monopoly on knowledge, on information. You know, it's like <clears throat> all the information you have to basically go through Google to get and like, even the blockchain, they're trying to make this all legit. You know, they're trying to avoid Google, but it's so hard. And, you know, Google's the reason why blockchain internet doesn't exist now. They would, I'm pretty sure they were probably trying to do it when, when Bitcoin was created. Because as soon as Bitcoin was created, the same technology that created that, they could have made an internet through that in the same time if they wanted. But, you know, all these things are being suppressed because I think that could literally stop them from suppressing shit. Because a blockchain internet is not gonna it's not gonna have human interaction where it's like, I believe this over this, so we're gonna try to put this out more than this. And it's like, no, it's just gonna put us out all. It's just it's just a connection thing. It has nothing to do with emotional bias or emotional whatever. It's just gonna put out what is. You know, and also I like the fact that you won't be able to have IP addresses either. So they won't be able to track you. There's so many things that can well, be... Well, you see, if they can't track you and if they can't police you, then what is to stop the likes of uh, pedophiles or what have you uh, promoting and prolificating all of their stuff? You see, there has to be some method of um, policing. Otherwise there's going to be absolute chaos because you see once human nature, it really can be a very, very terrible thing. And once people know that they've got free reign to do whatever they want to do, then can you imagine people will, will, will be stalking people, people will be threatening, people will, will be intimidating. All this, this stuff goes on already uh, throughout YouTube. Um, you know, it's so prolific and with all the movie stars and pop stars, they all get stalked and, and all this business now when everything is being policed and they find it very, very difficult to, to, to stop them. So I don't think there's any future for an uncontrolled platform. Ah, uh, 
that does so I've never really, really looked at it that way, but that is a that is a good point. I guess I, I guess we're gonna need some type of control, but but it's like but that's what that's the problem though because who's whose opinion is correct on the on how much control and on what is control and exactly. you know on what is wrong and right and like maybe we have a computer do that for us or something because humans will, will get their personal opinions involved instead of saying really what is yes yeah. and at the end of the day it's kind of like well look if you've got say like 90 percent which think one way and 10 percent think the other way and if the the control is on a consensus basis then the 10 percent will always be squashed um because the majority has the power now that isn't freedom of speech because just take psychedelics for instance you know, let's suggest that all those people involved in psychedelics is 10%. It's probably even much smaller. But how many people would take objection to psychedelics because they've been programmed? Masses of them. And so they could very, very quickly then do what Google, uh, YouTube has done to me, to you, to, to thousands of others. They'll just take us out because somebody's flagging. And all it needs is somebody to flag your ass. And then the, the algorithm just deletes your channel. And I swear this is what happened to me on <coughs> because I, I, I didn't see a facility to flag. But okay, I'm assuming that there the, 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 the was, but, and, and if there is, then all you've got to do is flag. And if the, the computer receives so many flags, then they're going to take it, that all oh, this bad content on this, and we'll close it down. And so what they did is they just closed my site down. They never communicated with me. They never gave me any warnings like uh, YouTube does. And so I sent an email. I'm saying, well, listen, I mean, what, on what basis are you, you, you taking me down? You don't say anything in your terms and conditions about psychedelics and swearing. And... Um, so what they did is they just put the, the site back up. They never sent me an email saying, sorry, or we made a mistake. I don't think it was a human being that did this. I think it was a computer. And so what they've done now is with all my videos on Vimeo, that they've, they've age restricted them because there's swear words. And I'm talking about things, you know, psychedelics and ooh, uh, opening the mind and uh, astral projection. And it's not suitable for um, young and frail people. So we can see what's going on. A massive shutdown, like David Icke says, on consciousness. It's a war on consciousness. And so therefore then we have to become privy. Working this through with all of us, it's my intention. I want to communicate with people like Psych Substance, um, your mate Tom, I want to do an interview with those. I want the connection from their sites to my sites to your site to right. everybody's site. I want it to be a hub with all the connection. And I, I want to do videos like this, talking about it from your perspective, their perspective, everyone's perspective, and then they can all come and have a view. What's Mark Cubens has got to say about it? What's Psych Substance got to say about it? You know, and so I think that's the right step in the. Um, the positive direction yeah no I, I agree with that <clears throat> there is some people that have um you know because we're all human so we're all not going to agree with each other but it's like i feel like we have to get past the disagreements and get past the little things and all that little well shit. i think we have to disagree to disagree so, yeah no yeah yeah you know yeah. We, we, we'll always have disagreement and i think we have to accept disagreement but you see what's happening in, in with the postmodernism, they don't want any disagreement and like um some top knob in uh youtube was saying in an interview that i watched they want one question one answer one answer one question so when you put a question into google like wikipedia they only want to give you one answer whose answer is that it's their fucking answer mm. and that's not a democracy is it that's, right. a, that's a freaking dictatorship. Yeah. <clears throat> but I mean, <clears throat> I think that we can, um, I think that this can work. Like I have a great feeling about this. Like lately what's interesting is even with making videos for me, ever since this has happened, I haven't even edited a video. Like I haven't needed to, I don't need to edit my videos anymore. Like I used to, I used to have little fuck ups where maybe I would swear a little too much or maybe I would, you know, be coughing or something, you know, hit the bowl or something, start coughing. But like, 
like I feel like I'm just gonna keep everything because it's like I feel like I have I have so much to say and I've always had so much to say but now it's like I'm saying it for a lot a deeper reason like this is this censorship is crazy because it's been happening for ages but it never really you never really think about it until it affects you until like until they're trying to silence you it's like everyone will say yo they're silencing me over here they're silencing that person over there but it's like it never really clicks in your head that it's this until it it's silence exactly and there's a um, there's a saying and it goes like something like first they came for the christians then they came for the muslims and then they came for the the jews and nobody did anything and then one day they're knocking on the door and they're coming for you well if you stood up when they went round uh, to arrest the Christians, the Muslims, and, and, and the Jews, then maybe you know your um, ass wouldn't be you know in, in, in the fucking jail now. And so what we have to do is we have to look out for everybody. And, and if there's an injustice taking place, and which there is, it's the freedom of speech. Everybody has to get involved. We can't just say, well, I'm all right. I'm not talking about psychedelics. I'm all right. I'm not talking about um, uh, politics. I'm not a political dissident or this, that, and the other. Maybe one day you will be. Maybe one day you're going to want to start speaking out to, about the government because they're, they're, they're trying to take your kids away from you. Because they've brought in a law which says uh, children from the age of three to the age of 16 can no longer be schooled by parents or no longer be brought up um, with their parents. They're going into institutions. I'm telling you, mate, this is, this is something because... In view of the fact that the government own every single person on this planet who has been registered at the births and deaths, because when your parents register you at the births and deaths, they sign you over to the government as chattel. That's what the birth certificate is. It's a birth certificate. Like when a ship comes to dock in, in, a, in a foreign country, then it births its goods onto the land and it gets a birth certificate in exchange. So what the mother does, the mother gives birth to the child child out of the water from the ocean onto the land and the government give uh, the parents a piece of paper in exchange and basically it says that you've given your child to us and what they do is they write their name down in capitals it's not your name it's not my name it's the fictitious name do you know about the straw man do you know about this stuff Kind of, not, not, um, very, very interesting. You can see then if you, if you listen to this, if you look into it, Jay, uh, the, the, the straw man and the, um, the false language that we, we are all, uh, working under. It's the language that is created in capital letters because capital letters isn't in the English styles manual. It isn't recognized by the English styles manual, which writes every single word that there is in the English language. Capital letters do not come into that. So therefore, they are an exterior language. It's a language which has been created by the powers that be. And that's why capital letters are used on your birth certificate, on your driver's license, on your passport, on all this sort of thing, because that tells the government that you belong to them. It's like when you receive a document uh, from... Um, uh, any organization it's in capital you know if it's a contract or something it's in capitals because this comes in under this jurisdiction which is the law that's been brought about under our ignorance we've allowed it to happen mm -hmm. and so on the basis of that then we're all slaves they think they own us all and they do unless we reject um, what they are offering you see, what they offer us in exchange for our slavery, Jay, is, okay, so we, we can, in some countries, we, we can have um, free national health care. And um, we um, pay into a system which creates schools for our children. Well, you, you know, which creates propaganda institutions for our children. Uh, basically, that, that's all it is. And so we, we pay into the government for the privilege of the government supplying us with this stuff. Roads, schools, um, relative safety, and this, that, and the other. If we don't want that, then we give our passport back, we give our driving licenses back. You can't drive on the roads because the roads are owned by them. You can't fly uh, to another country because it's all owned by them. And so if you, if you don't want to comply within the walls of this prison, you can be free, but you can't do anything. 
And this is why it says in the Bible, everybody will have the mark of the beast on his right hand or on his forehead, and he will not be able to buy or sell when he has the mark of the beast. And this is what is happening. You see, they're going to take money away and they, go, they want to chip us. But before they're, they're going to chip us, they're, they're going to be doing the retina scan or the fingerprint scan. And nobody will be able to buy or sell until we have been immersed, embroiled, captivated into the system. Mm. I can see that happening, though, sadly. <clears throat> I can definitely see that happening. But I mean, I can also see on the other side, I can see it happening with a good, a good side. I can see Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, you know, kind of preventing them from being able to take over the money. You know, they do want to, they do want to make, take away money, but I don't think they expected cryptocurrency to get as big as it did or whatever. Cause you know, obviously cryptocurrency, yes, it's a, it's a money that they can, that it has nothing to do with physical cash money anymore, but at the same time, it's, um, it's uncontrollable. So that's, it kind of takes out away their plan of trying to control it. Um, but also that's been suppressed too. Like, you know, there's a lot of people, a lot of banks, a lot of big named people that try to make cryptocurrency seem like it's a fad, like it won't last, like it's a, it's a whatever. And if you invest in cryptocurrency, you're stupid or, or like, there's a lot of people that try to steer away from that because that has a possibility to take the system down. But it all has to do with, the, you know, that blockchain anyways. Like, it's all blockchain. And I definitely think that blockchain in general has to take the, can take the system down. But I think with what's going on, with everything, with the censorship, with, with us needing to connect and come together, I definitely think that we just, we're going to have to do it with the way the world's going. Like, my, my one friend was saying how we should, get, we should go protest in the streets and have another million man march. And I was explaining how, we can do that, but we could do that online from sitting on our couch. We could do that online from sitting on our phone. Like there's like, I joined this mind conference the other day. There was this conference from a minds.com, the owner of minds.com, Bill Ottman. He kind of um, set it up and it was in New York city. There's probably only like 20 people at this conference in New York city, but yet um, this YouTuber sticks Hexenhammer, um, he live streamed it. So because he live streamed it, there was about 2,000 you know, people in this live stream. So really, yes, there was only 20 people in the conference, but there was really 2,000 people in the conference. Exactly. And you see, these marches, they don't do jack shit. It's uh, very well known that they don't do that because if you get a million people walking out in New York or London and there's all the frenzy and people think that something happened, you know, we're protesting against the government, then just um, keep watching what it was that you're protesting against and you'll see that uh, it had no effect whatsoever. It's, it's not going to make an effect because um, all they do is, okay, they just increase the policing out there for one day and uh, a few people get arrested and this, that and the other. And then the powers that be go, Forget about it. And everybody is under the thumbs of uh, the, the, the pyramidical hierarchical system. And so it's passed down. Don't do nothing. Don't do nothing. Don't do nothing. Don't do nothing. And, and that's what, what happens. And so what people have got to do then, not going out in the fucking street, they've got to start taking action in another way. They've got to start saying, I don't want to use your fucking credit card. I don't want to use your um, fucking phone. I don't want to um, con comply with all your bullshit fucking passwords passwords and this, that and the other, because you, 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 you're stealing my life, you're stealing my identity. With the phones these days, they're listening in to you. And uh, there's plenty of um, videos on, on YouTube now, which are speaking about if you say something to your friend or girlfriend, parent, whatever, um, oh, I feel like a McDonald's or, oh, I think I'm going to go on holiday to Cyprus um, this year. Within a fucking hour, you'll have advertisement coming up on your phone about McDonald's and Cyprus. And so this right. is proven that Facebook are listening to every single thing that you, you, you say, regardless of whether your phone's on or off. And so when you realize that you're under this web of spying, then we've got to be very, very, very careful about what we're, we're going to be doing from this point forward. Even this conversation is so being listened to. And oh, right. What's so crazy, though, what's so crazy is where did we go wrong? Like, where the hell did we like, so there was a time where technology was just being created. It's like this technology is amazing. It can, it changed everything, you know, in a good way, bad ways, whatever, whatever. But it's like, I, I was just, it's like, I don't get where we went wrong to being able to just blindly 
uh, took, like these companies started doing these agreement things that we have to agree to, right? Like in the beginning, that didn't really happen. But now like every time you download an app, you have to agree. Yeah. But, <laughs> but we are personally agreeing that if you go through those terms that says it, it says the app needs to even if it was just a game like if it's just like a little tiny game or, or whatever the app is like i need permission to go through your your pictures i need permission to go through your audio i need permission to use your mic we don't read it, it it's yeah. pages and pages long they do it absolutely on purpose because nobody get, you know can be bothered with all that shit. and so you, you, you if you don't sign, yes, I accept, then you ain't getting in to whatever you want to, to do. And so you, you're not going to be able to function. And so therefore, what you do is every time you agree, you agree, you agree, you give your life away. You give your freedom away. And this is what people have been doing for the last hundred years, but increasingly more and more and more when we look at um, the, the digitized application of the world. You see, initially when they started banks, oh, do you agree with this? Do you agree with our terms? Yeah, I agree with your terms. And then you, when you buy something, when you take a credit card, when you uh, open a bank account, whatever it is, you're always agreeing with their terms. Well, what about my fucking terms? What about your terms? Are you agreeing with my terms? No, because we don't have any rights. We don't have any terms because we own, we own chattel. They are the owners, and so basically that's uh, where it all went wrong. It went wrong with the advent of the uh, the birth certificate, which came into play, I believe, some somewhere just just straight after the Second World War. I think this is what it was all about. It was about gathering the the, the general census of uh, populace and uh, what people do as a vocation, how many people are unemployed, employed, and men and women and kids and all this. They wanted to know absolutely everything about their slaves. And so now they, they know everything about us because every single person on the planet has got a fucking phone. And so they're, they're counting us and they're listening to us and they're getting us all to agree. And then... If we should contest, they'll say, well, you agreed to it. Look, here's this document you signed. Look, here's this agreement you signed on the internet. You agreed to everything. So what can you do? You've got to look at your own ignorance. You've got to look at your own laziness. And <coughs> there has to be a change around in the state of the, the, the human mind that, that stops giving our energy and power away to these people because everybody's going to see very, very soon that we've all been making very, very grave mistakes. Yeah, because I think all, all of that leads up to what we're going through now with the internet censorship. It all leads to the fact that we're just blindly giving away our freedom. But it is it does suck because the system is kind of playing it that way. I feel like they have a, you know, when we always say they, but it's like, I do feel like they have an agenda, whether it's to dumb down America, whether it's to dumb dumb down the world, whether it's to dumb down whatever, but I definitely feel like there is something, these people that have a lot of power, they just want more power. And how do you gain more power? You take away, you take away the human's power. You make us feel powerless. You make us feel like we have no choice. Like we have no choice but to accept, you know, their terms and conditions or we can't download their app. We, you know, it's like they give us no option and either conform or shit, go create your own YouTube. And most people are like, oh, I can't create my own YouTube, so I got to use YouTube. I can't create my own Facebook, so I got to use Facebook. I got to click these terms and conditions. And it's like, slowly but surely, that's just showing the companies that they can slowly start doing that bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until yeah. eventually... And so, okay, well, we're freedom. still in a situation whereby the odd person can create an alternative and they are doing this. But that ain't going to last for long. They're, they're going to crush all the competition. And this is what uh, they've been doing for this past, like, 70 years. Crushing all the competition. So now you've just got Walmart. You, you've just got uh, huge chains uh, of supermarkets and um, factories and production lines and all this sort of thing, which are owned by very few companies. You know, I don't know how many companies um, reputedly, if, if you listen to people that have, have done a massive amount of research, like Ike, they'll tell you that it's 13 families that own the world. And then I don't know how many companies, but if, if you say like 5,000 companies, I, I, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it'd be much, much less than that. I mean, if you look at the extent of Walmart in America, uh, in relation to other companies, you know, 
if you looked on some sort of uh, Dow's index or something to see what the big names are, then I'm pretty sure that you'll discover that there's you know, probably only about 100 of them which have got 90% of the control over everything. And so there you have it. This is where we are now. And um, we've left it far too late because we've been lazy, we've been ignorant, we've just been wanting to get along with our lives, you know, uh, have peace and uh, don't want people, you know, calling us out and this, that and the other. And we don't want to go out in the rain marching for our freedom. Oh, you know, it's far too uncomfortable. Let's just sit at home watching the telly and let them take away more of our lives and freedom. And, and this is it. And so humanity really deserves what it's got. It's allowed itself to be here. And so now it's just a case of whether there are enough awakened braves whom are going to turn things around, who are going to stand up for their rights and going to go, no, this isn't the way it's going to be. Right. Because that's really what it's going to take. People yeah, just... that's what it's going to take. And it seems we're on the precipice of great change now. And if we don't do anything within, within this next 10 years, absolutely maximum, we need to start doing it now. But look at the rate the G-grid is coming in. What's that fucking thing called? D-grid. Um, with, with all the electronics in your house and, and everything, the, the uh, radio waves. Ah, uh, fuck, I forget. But I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And um, so that, that's uh, taking over. And so all this stuff, your house will be able to be controlled by a central computer. And so... If, for instance, um, there's um, a resource shortage, then they can turn down the facility for you to heat your home. And so you won't have any heat, and they can tell you, oh, sorry, resources are, are low. They can do this with, with anything like this. They're gonna, of course, they're going to be listening to, to every single thing that you say from every device that they put into your house. And so if you start uh, anti-government campaigning, this, that, and the other, you'll go missing in, in the night like they did in, in, in Germany, the night of the long knives, when Hitler rounded up all the people that were political dissidents, never to be seen again. Right. I feel like it's just crazy that history is repeating itself. You know, like, yeah, we have technology and it might be a little different. You know, it might look different because the internet and it's all the internet, but it's still the same. People who are trying to help awaken the others get shut down. It always... You know, but this time I think it's different. We have the internet and we can't get shut down because the issue is that the past societies and past generations and many, many past generations either let themselves get conformed. Like a lot of people let themselves get conformed. Like the 60s, like there was this big 60s revolution that happened here in America. And like most of the hippies from the 60s are just conformed back to reality, to what society wanted them to do. You know, the, I mean, that's 500,000 people that, you know, tuned in, turned on, and dropped out, but uh, tuned back into society after that. And I think that's issues like this that they can run into, issues like this that they probably ran into that are different, where it's like somebody tried silencing them or conforming them, forcing them to, like, we're getting forced to accept the, you know, applications and accept these terms and conditions. It's like, it, this has been happening, it's just happening in a different way now. And we have the internet still, so we can still can connect. We can still connect ideas and we can still come together because I think about the fact that they've been trying to make Kratom illegal for two years, almost three years. They, they keep trying, but they have not succeeded yet. And that is because the Kratom community tends to come together a lot better than other, other communities. Like, yeah. I mean, people signed 100, 150 signatures on a signature. If we can get 150 signatures right now for this, you know, net neutrality or for the, you know, the, the censorship or for all these things that are happening, because there's this that people are talking about creating because there's a bill of rights but there is no internet bill of rights google like people have, are suing google people are suing youtube people are suing these people but youtube has this issue there's this issue because youtube is a private company so it's not like a government so mm -hmm. it does not the same law do not apply but the internet bill of rights that would change that but I literally think like, and like I've been hearing people talk about the Internet Bill of Rights for the past week, but I heard one person say, this is the website to sign the Internet Bill of Rights because all it is is talk right now. But like the reason I brought up the Kratom community thing, it's because the difference is I could see that as soon as they made Kratom illegal, we had 30 days to do something, 30 days. And it, 
30 days, 150 people, 150,000 people signed this petition to keep it legal. I just don't get, you know, there was, there was a lot of motivation though, because I mean, a lot of people love their kratom. A lot of people don't want to go back to opiates, don't want to go back to pills. Well, it's like- that's the thing, isn't it? Because um, it's, a, it's an opiate uh, substitute. And so they, if they've been on uh, strong uh, painkillers, uh, for a long time, years, and then they they want to come off that because they're they're fucking their bodies and their lives. Then uh, kratom is uh, a superb alternative, and so many people that signed the petition, of course, were dependent on on this because of their pain and their their suffering, and so. It, it takes that, it takes pain and it takes suffering and it takes sheer terror of not having that uh, to depend upon to ease your pain and the fear of going back onto opioids which is, it, 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 or opiates, it, this is what they want. They want you on um, fucking subscription medications. They don't want you on natural plant stuff. Yeah. But I think I just think that mindset that kept Kratom legal, that's still keeping Kratom legal, the fact that we all can come together to sign petitions, that needs to be applied to what's going on with the internet, with censorship, the psychedelic community. Like, I think there needs to be petitions going on. We need to literally be suing YouTube for like, my videos are a little different because I'm very, I'm very upfront. Like, I'm very just whatever hiding the fact that, you know, all, all YouTube, this is not real and all this other shit. No, no. I took psychedelics and this is my experience and this is what I learned from it. So I understand that that might have broke the community guidelines of YouTube. But there are many, many YouTubers that have not really broke their guidelines at all that are that have still gotten deleted, that are still getting videos deleted, that are still getting affected. So those people could easily sign a petition saying, we didn't break your guidelines. Here's your guidelines. Where in there that is, is it broken? Sign a petition and, and get 100,000 pe- 100, people to sign it, and then it gets put in front of the White House. If there's 100,000 people on the signature, then it gets put in front of the White House. Or, you know, I just think that it's going to take more than just uh, our side of things. We're like, I'm glad that Alex Jones is like getting, I'm not really glad he's getting affected, but I'm glad that he's heading this fight as well. I'm not necessarily a fan of Alex Jones. I'm just a fan of anyone who's speaking their mind. And like, it doesn't matter what, I mean, somebody could believe that God is a dragon in the sky that spits fire or whatever. Like, I don't care what you believe that's on you. You know, I just believe that people should be able to express what they believe and not get Uh, absolutely and so what we need is we need people like alex jones to be affected we need people like uh david ike to be affected because these people have a a, a great number of followers what's jones got is he got 11 million subscribers or 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 something like this (laughs) yeah i think all together yeah to 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 have his uh, balls busted we need him to be seriously threatened because he is the one that's going to be getting his lawyers to front the the, this uh signature campaign whatever it is that is going to be required and they can do it via his channel because all he needs to do he, he, he puts out a fucking link and he goes all you got to do is just like press this link on your computer and then that's your electronic signature and so we can see that there's 10 million people that uh, are now got something to say about it this is the way it's going to go people like you and i we're absolutely nothing we just we don't even come into the equation but collectively on a on a um a signature um on a what, what can we call it? Uh, what, do, what would you call um, a document that we're going to pres- present to the government or, or the, the, the White House? I, th- I mean, it would be like, I guess, it, I mean, I mean, Some I guess. Some sort of petition against petition, something. Petition, yeah. yeah, I definitely think, a pet- I don't know, like, I don't even know what it would say or what we would do, but I do agree with the Internet Bill of Rights thing that everyone's been talking about, that there needs to be an Internet Bill of Rights because these companies are just saying, oh, the Bill of Rights doesn't apply to us. Um, you know, they, they say, we say, we're getting our freedom of speech, you know, taken away. Oh, no, that doesn't apply to us. We're a private company. Um, so that's why I think the Internet Bill of Rights should be, the, honestly, the first petition that should be going around. Like, you know, because we can't necessarily go to the one the psychedelic community is getting, you know, banned. 
because psychedelics, most psychedelics are illegal in ways. But what we can do is definitely say that the, the it, way that our freedom of speech is, yeah. is being compromised. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you see, just for the benefit of the viewer who aren't familiar with you, you have been talking about psychedelics for um, how many years on YouTube? Like three and a half years. Three and a half years. And um, how many videos did you have up? I had about 250. 250 videos with 150,000 views and um, one and a half thousand subscribers. Yeah. And... They busted your ass. They took your site down. Yeah, yeah. And so how did they do it? They, they, did they warn you on a few occasions? Just like they did me. But you see, what they did is they, they don't give you any opportunity. They come in like thieves in the night. And what they do is they've already flagged all the videos because the computer goes through an algorithm and it, it comes up with all the ones that it, it wants and it flags them. But it doesn't tell you in one day that they've flagged three of your uh, or, or st struck off three of your videos or flagged three of them and so they're striking you off now. They don't tell you that because that seems, oh, Lord, that's so unfair, that's outrageous. But in actual fact, what they've done, because they've flagged them already and it's only a matter of time that they're going to release to you um, that, oh, uh, by the way, uh, Mr. Berry, uh, this video has been flagged. If you get two more um, uh, strikes, then we're going to, you know, uh, terminate your account and so then uh, a few days later you get another one this video has been been flagged and so we, we'll give you another strike you see that's how they did it to me and that's how they did it to lots of people it's very very sneaky because they don't give you any chance uh, to tidy up your act for instance if there's something that's objectionable that's breaking their rules which are very very vague and it doesn't say anything about psychedelics it just says if we deem something to be dangerous well, fucking me, anything could be deemed to be dangerous if you look at it in, in, in a certain perspective. And so, I mean, a child playing with a feather can be deemed to be dangerous. Well, I mean, if the child fell on, on the feather when the, the actual quill was facing towards its face and it went into its eye, so we need to ban all feathers. You know, there could be a good case for that, couldn't there? And so th this is um, the whole premise that they're starting on. And so this is what they've done across the board without giving anybody any warning that the strikes have already been in the fucking pipeline and they come bomb, bomb, bomb within the space of, space of a week. And so... That's what happened. And so that yeah. happened to me, that happened to you, that happened to, um, uh, as, is Psych Substance still up and running? Yeah, yeah. So a lot of people are still up. Um, there's a lot of people that went down, though, um, because I, I'm very involved in just watching YouTube videos. Like, I'm very into just watching other people's YouTube videos and shit. So I try to keep up with everyone. I know Stephen Castile, his, his channel got deleted. Um, Smart Eds TV, um, his channel got deleted. Um, but Smart Heads wasn't even really... Like, it's not like he he was just reviewing like a lot of times he would just review herbal products or review you know it's not like he was uh really out there saying you know psychedelics or doing trip reports or anything so it just and then there's also a whole the other side of you know people that got affected which had nothing to do with psychedelics which is like uh what they would call the political terms which is like the the alt right wing or whatever now what's funny is i don't understand politics so i don't understand what left wing or right wing means but i have an idea that they mean they they describe alex jones as a right wing so i so i kind of get the context and i kind of get what they mean yeah but, I mean, but right wingers basically are getting affected as well anyone who's like alex jones you know talking about that things talking about Anything that, and even CNN, CNN is the one that tried to take Alex Jones' channel down. Like they're making this, they're putting it on CNN that, oh, Alex Jones need to get his channel removed. YouTube needs to do something about it. And it's like, it doesn't help that these big news corporations are also trying to take the other side of the news down. Well, picture this then. 90% of uh, the world's uh, media is owned by the, the select few, the hidden hand. Y you know that much, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay, and so CNN, Fox News, and uh, CBS, you name it, 90% of the media companies that you have in America there, they're owned by very, very few companies. And so they can see that they're in big trouble with the competition, and the competition is YouTube. And so therefore then, it is them, those people who own your media, and uh, the BBC is owned by the, the Jews, you know? Oh. 
Yeah, and so, I mean, not to get too Jewish again, but these are the ones that have got all the money. These are the ones that have got all the jurisdiction over the world. The British Broadcasting Corporation isn't owned by Britain. It's owned by other people that don't live in Britain. That's insane. Yeah, and so when, when you look at that, and when you know what's going on there, there is no way on this planet that they are not going to buy up everything. It's just a game of fucking Monopoly. You know, if you've got like... Um, Times Square or a Central Station, this, that, and the other, on your Monopoly board in America, they want it. Because when they've got it, they've got complete jurisdiction over who use it, when and where, and all the rest of this stuff. And so they're going to take uh, YouTube and the likes of Alex Jones and uh, David Icke and all that, they're letting them get away with it now because they're not overtly really doing anything so horrendous. They're not breaking the law, law like promulgating free smoking uh, psychedelics and expanding your mind. No. And so there's certain people that are being allowed to get away with it. And people are saying, Alex Jones is a shill and uh, he's government, um, this, that and the other. And the only reason he's existing is because he's working for the opposition. Well, look, the only reason he's in, is, is, is still in existence now is because like, to take him down with 11 million uh, subscribers, that would cause a bit of an issue. But maybe the, the, the people that are buying YouTube they're going to do it, and I'm pretty sure they will do it, because the private company, uh, this moment in time, maybe they don't have too much of a, of a vested interest in what Alex Jones is saying, because it's all political stuff. It's all about fucking the pedestrian paedophiles and Clinton paedophiles and uh, all, all the rest of the, this shit. And so YouTube is just running the fucking... Um, uh, free media uh, company but by the time it gets owned by the people that own all the media companies then it's going to come under the same jurisdiction mm. the same stifling the suppression of freedom of speech and so you see when when it gets sold you see the process now being bought out did you know that what? youtube is is, is, in, is in the process now of being bought out not necessarily. As in my mind, I, th I thought that it was already like, in my mind, I thought the guy who invented YouTube obviously doesn't own YouTube anymore. Like, I don't know. Well, uh, yeah, I, I would think it was uh, probably clandestinely sold a long time ago. But um, uh, I've recently been privy to information that uh, says that it's going um, under the hammer very, very soon. And um, the people that are going to be buying it are the you-know-whos. And so as soon as that happens, then the, 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 we will get to know whatever they want us to know. The same shit that they wanted us to know, which was being fucking banged out by CNN and all the rest of that shower of shit. Same old crap. And it's, they're just trying to, they're trying to censor the internet. They're trying to get control of the internet, just like they have control over TV. Just like they can, you know, it's like... They have the control over the world, Mark. They have the control over all the resources. They have the control over absolutely fucking everything. They have control over the skies. They have control uh, over, you know, the, the fucking weather. They control the weather. They're, they've got um, laser satellites that can create clouds and rain and electromagnetic storms and hurricanes and all this sort of thing. And this bullshit that's been going on in California with Santa Rose, uh, how these houses were burnt to a fucking cinder like nobody's ever seen before. This technology, the army have got. It's absolutely legit. You can read up about it. You can read all the documents which tell you the capabilities. That, that, and that, that when you read these documents, you listen to the capabilities, we go, well, that's what fucking happened. That's exactly what happened. When aluminum wheels melted, when steel steering wheels melted, when all this stuff is melting, which you need 2,000 degrees centigrade to melt, you don't get this fucking uh, raise of temperature in a bushfire. Right. And so, you know, you're, you're a young lad and you're doing very well so far, but there's, there's still a whole lot more that you, you, you need to keep up uh, or get up to speed on if you're going to get a handle on, on this world. Because when you look at it, the, the situation that's going on, absolutely, it's an absolute prison. It's absolute mind fuck. It's uh, an absolute fucking suppression of rights and everything. All the resources are owned. All the countries are owned. You know, every single country on the planet, bar about two, 
Iran and another country is a private corporation. They're businesses. Did you know that? That's insane. Like okay. The way- United <laughs> States of America is a business. And the hub is Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is a private country. It isn't owned by America. It isn't a part of America. It's separate, just like the Vatican is separate. Vatican City, it's not a part of Italy. It's a separate country onto its own right, just like a, part, a certain part in, in, in London. It's called Marble Bar. They're, they're, they're separate little areas with, within a nation where all the fucking shenanigans go down. Every single country on the planet, like I say, by about two, are corporations. Australia is a corporation. Who owns Australia? The you know who's. Who owns Great Britain? The you know who's. Who owns America? The you know who's. They're all businesses. And you can actually see at Corporation House the businesses registered. Where are these um, businesses registered? Like the, 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 the Commonwealth of Australia is registered in Washington, D.C. Why is it registered there? Oh, simply because uh, Washington DC owns fucking Australia. Dude, that's insane. It bro. is insane. It is fucking insane because people don't know this stuff. It's- and let me just go a little bit further. There isn't a single square ounce of land on this planet that anybody privately owns. You may have a certificate which tells you that you own your own home, that you own this land, but when you look into the law, you will be very shocked to discover that in actual fact, you do not own any land. And so if you don't own any land, then whatever you've built on it or whatever you purchased on it uh, has been purchased and built illegally. Or it's been built um, in the, with the approval that you're building it on somebody else's land that doesn't own to you. And so th- this is the whole thing about the whole world. And this is why people can't go here and they can't do there. And they can't do this and that because all the land is owned. Then there's something else called Agenda 21, which you might want to get familiar with. Agenda 21. I've is, heard of it a little bit. Yeah, okay. So this has been brought about by the United Nations. And it's an agenda that uh, basically depicts 90-odd percent of the world being given back to nature. And if you look at the map of America, you can see this map in the Agenda 21, and, and you can see many, many people that are speaking about it, which are very uh, c- clued up on it, they will, they will show you what the, the, um, the, they have in a store for America. It's to take back all of the, the land which people seem to think they own, but they fucking don't own, and give it back to nature. And to make these national reserves um, non-human. They, they are going to be fenced in and they're going to be out of bounds for the general public. They're only going to be uh, allowed to be entered by the, the powers that be. And so they are going to be controlling all of the resources. This is why this big G-grid thing is, fucking, is coming on because they want everything under one lever. They can turn it on or they can turn it off. And that's how it's going to be. And, and so... T- we're all fucked, mate. We're all fucked. Isn't this a fucking wonderful time to be alive, though, man? Because honestly, I feel like there's a lot of chaos going on. This is like the in, the in-between of it could go this way, it could go this way. And literally, we're right in the middle of it. And it's I feel like it's going to be up to individually we don't have that much power like we're not it's not like we have 10 million subscribers and 10 million followers and all this other but yet collectively we can make a huge impact and i think that's what that's what we're supposed to do you know i think i think everything is the way it was supposed to be you know like i I don't necessarily believe in fate because i believe in free will and you have your own thoughts create reality and all that but I do think that this is the idea that there is something that they've always wanted to control. You know, I mean, the way you just described it, these motherfuckers control the world already without the internet. They've they, controlled the world for for ages, at, at like, least at least the past three thousand years, because all the royal families that they derive out of the Egyptian royal families, it's all one bloodline. Ah, uh, and they've permeated so this, all over the world. This has been happening longer. This has been happening so long that back then when it started, there was nobody to even speak up because nobody knew anything. Yeah. You know? So it's like, I just, I can just see that this has been going on for a while. And right now it's almost their end game. Like whatever started 3000 years ago, it's almost over now. Their fucking goal is almost accomplished. And 
but I think that people like us speaking about it, talking about it, the issue is a lot of people think that things like this are just crazy conspiracy theories, but it's like, that's why I'm kind of glad the censorship happened because it separates the fact that, oh yeah, some of these ideas you might think are crazy conspiracy theories, but this censorship ha is really happening now. Like this is something you can actually show to somebody and be like, yeah, look, like my channel got deleted. Look, hundreds of other channels got deleted. Look, hundreds of people getting affected. And it's just now it's now it's almost like they're so ahead in their game of control that they're just upfront about it now. Absolutely they're, upfront. Like, like they're not even a secret anymore, you know? No, no, it's, it's, it's completely in your face. Are you familiar with um, Jordan Peterson? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, he's been a victim of them, of the postmodernists wanting to um, crush the, the freedom of speech and the right to call a boy a boy and a girl a girl and any number of bullshit like this. And so when you've got all this stuff going on, when you look at it and you think, hang on, they don't want gender anymore. They want to eliminate gender what, what, how's that going to work? They don't want male toilets, female toilets. They're just going to have human toilets. And they're not going to recognize that uh, you're a male and, and she's a female because um, that's labeling. And um, we all have our own right to consider ourselves whatever we want to be. And if I'm a bloke and I've got the dick and I want to call myself a woman, that's my prerogative. And if you call me a bloke, if you see me in the shower one day, you go, you're a fucking bloke, Aaron. Unless that's a very large clitoris that you've got there. <laughs> I can say, I'm going to sue your ass, motherfucker. And I'll go to the police and you will be arrested. And you'll be charged. <coughs> violating my freedom. And this is becoming reality. This is yeah. like... It's, yeah. funny that, it's, like, it's a fucking nightmare yeah. becoming a, a, a lucid nightmare. It's absolutely incredible. Now, I do agree that, like, you should be able to say whatever you, you should be able to be whatever you want to be. But if you have, I, you know, if you have facial hair and, you know, somebody asks you or a, re a restaurant asks, you know, you have to remove your facial hair to work at this restaurant. And you, and you say, well, I don't have facial hair. I don't know what you, you know. To me, this is no facial hair. So to what me, I- What are you I'm, talking about? I'm a woman. <laughs> it's like it's just I don't know this it's just I feel like we should accept what is if you have a dick you have a dick if you have a vagina you have a vagina it doesn't it's just I feel like now there is that you know this all just happened because the trans thing you know with the trans community but that has happened the, it's not like the trans the trans community that it's not like that is just transgender happened. Yeah, but it's not like that's, but that's what I mean. You almost have to be politically correct or then you got a group of people that get mad. Yeah. But, it's, but then it's just, I feel like people, it, it, people need to grow some balls. People need I, I, absolutely. People do need to grow some fucking balls. And, and I, I, I didn't coin my site, the Awaken Brave, um, you know, just for the, the, the fun of it. Uh, you know, I, I thought long and hard uh, about the name, and that is exactly what people need to be. You know, they need to be be brave uh, if they're going to be awakened. And if they're going to be awakened, then they need to be brave. And so this is the whole thing. But people, you see, um, they don't have balls. And I made a video about that not too long ago. I, I said, um, particularly the, 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 the white Western man has lost his balls because everything has become so comfortable and so cozy. You see, all these um, immigrants uh, which are coming out of the Middle East into Europe, uh, you can see they've got balls, they're angry, and they do whatever they want to do. They go raping uh, uh, the women and, and, and beating up uh, the, the white folk and everything. They don't give a fuck. And what happens is we're all scared of them. And all the police is scared of them because there's a lot of them and they're angry and they've got balls. You see, but we've not got no balls and we're not scared. Uh, we are scared. And so therefore we don't do anything. And so this is the thing. And, you know, in Northern Europe, in countries like Sweden, where they've got a great number of these um, immigrants and they absolutely have full reign over that country. That country is at mercy to maybe something like one million uh, refugees. And if there's, a, I don't know how, what the population of Sweden is um, um, or Finland, these countries, let's just say 50 million each or something like that. They're at the mercy of one million. The one million are running fucking rings around them. Why? Because Brussels is giving the jurisdiction to the immigrant. Because 
Russell was instigated the infiltration of foreign people into Europe because they want to break down the human uh, psyche. They want to break down the um, white supremacy thing. They want to break down um, Western values because they want everybody to be completely intermixed and, and not know what the fuck culture they belong to, what religion they belong to, or anything. And when they're all broken down, that's when they're weak. And so that's why they've done it. And so there's a whole conspiracy agenda going on all over the world in a whole myriad of different facets. Yeah. Because these people just... like George Soros, they've got fingers in pies all over the world and they've got billions and billions in which to manipulate whole countries. They can bring whole countries to their knees by stifling Correct. and affecting the economy and the currency of that particular nation. It's just... I don't know. I guess all we can do is just keep doing what we're doing. Keep doing what we do. We'll keep, keep speaking our mind, not let us get silenced because the issue is to silence themselves. And, you know, a lot of people won't stand up for what they believe in. You know, people live in fear. And, like, I don't know. Like, I was thinking the other day, like, I'm literally, I don't give a fuck. I'll go to jail for this shit. I don't give a motherfucker. Like, exactly I don't my mind. Exactly. And I, and I respect that. To Mark, because this is how we need to be. Because just like um, Charlie Manson says, what fucking jail? Exactly. You know, what it's fucking jail? jail. The jail, the, the, the world's a fucking jail. You're in a jail. If you come to me with your silly truncheon and your handcuffs and your fucking badge and your whistle, you're in a fucking jail, mate. You're in a jail here. You're absolutely all tied up and bound. And, and so this is the whole thing. And, and so, yes, not letting them control our minds. This is the thing. And um, so if you can express yourself in this way, and you know from watching my videos and being a member of uh, my site for a long time, you know that uh, my mouth isn't constrained. And this is why that the site got taken down, because I'm not allowing them to tell me what I can't do and, and, and promote and speak about and so I just did it without hiding anything and so that's what I'm always going to continue to do and so the more people that we've got prepared um, to do that and when you look at it if we all group together and if we say motherfuckers you can put us in jail but if there's like one million of, of us going motherfuckers you can put us in jail well they can't because they haven't got the jails to do it and exactly. so therefore then they've got to make a compromise and they've got to change the rules somehow haven't they then if there's 10 million of us going motherfuckers put us in jail then because that will cost the government like you know twenty thousand dollars a week to keep me in incarcerated whereas if i was on benefit it would only cost the government two hundred dollars a week and there's a lot of difference isn't there and so you just better fucking leave the people alone otherwise right. we're gonna fuck you up <laughs> <coughs> yeah this is it's just it's a crazy time to be alive but it is a crazy time and like you said mark it's it's a beautiful time to be alive because we what we have been privy to now is absolutely mind bending absolutely unbelievable for the vast majority of, of of the people out there unless you have put years and years of research into what is going on you don't know anything and this is why the likes of david ike and jonesy and um you know michael michael Tessarian and mark passio these people have put 30 years into it uh, very very in intensive esoteric research and they know what the deal is and when they tell you that the, the royal families and, and the, the politicians are all from the same bloodlines and they all derive out of Egypt and even before then they derive probably from the fucking Atlanteans and it has been uh, in place for thousands and thousands of years and the only difference is now that uh, the technology has allowed the world to become privy to it via something that they've created, they've needed to create it to, ha ha to add an extension to our control. But in the interim, it's allowing us to peep beyond the veil of a certain reality into another one and seeing what they're doing, you see. It's like when Dorothy goes to the Emerald City and Toddo, the little dog, he pulls back the curtain, sees the, the, the guy speaking through the megaphone, listen to me. You know, you should be afraid of me. It's just a silly little old man. And so 
hopefully what the internet is going to be doing now is, is it's going to be allowing us to be privy to know that there's only a very, very, very few people that are pulling the strings on the whole world and what, how they're doing it, Mark. They're doing it through illusion. They're doing it through magic. They're doing it through hypnosis. They're doing it through the media, telling us this, telling us that, telling us this, telling us that, until we've told us so many times it must be true. Right. So what do you reckon? Where do you think we're going with all this? What's the end result you can see? Well, I can see two things. I can see either, I can see it going good, good or bad. I mean, but I can see us either getting you know, the blockchain up and going, the, the like mines, like the issue is with mines, right? I, the reason why I say mines.com is like, I feel like it's like the only social media site I've ever seen that literally the owner of it is just upfront about everything. It's not like Mark Zuckerberg is even talking about the censorship thing that's going on or talking about anything. You know, he, he doesn't talk about things like that. Um, but I feel like, but even they're getting censored. Minds.com is getting censored by Google right now. If he was on, a, the owner of Minds was on, um, they did a little thing on Fox News <coughs> with the owner of Minds. And, you know, he even said that, you know, he's getting censored. So then that's why he's trying to, you know, head this fight of, you know, a free speech and, and all this. But I can see us either going towards that, going towards having other people like him create sites that are, you know, social media sites that are uncensored, that are um, more open, you know, all the information's open. Um, or I can see us just all shutting up and letting, you know, society keep us in a box. And this box that we're in, like our great grandkids will be in such a crazy box that they won't even know who they are. They won't know born really. Born into a box. Yeah. We've been born into a prison planet, but seriously, they, they're born into a box. And that their box it just be, will be around their head. And um, th- that's all they're going to be privy to. You see, the whole premise of George Orwell's 1984 the guy who plays the leading role in, in that movie, and I've said this in a, in a few videos, uh, John Hurt, his job is to change history. And so he sits in an office all day long and he's going through the archive of newspapers and all this sort of thing. And he's looking at what the headline says and then what it says about this and that. And he's uh, replacing that with what he's told to replace it with. And so the history is slowly being eradicated. That's what's happening. That is actually what is happening on this planet. And that's why we don't know uh, nothing about how the pyramids are built. This is why all over the world, there's, there's pyramids just all over the world on every continent. And many of them are buried. Even in China, they, they buried the several pyramids, huge pyramids, as big as the Great Pyramid in Giza. They fucking buried them. It must have took them 20 years with men running up with um, you know these rice bowls on the heads and, and, and putting the soil over and it's absolutely illegal to go anywhere near them or to take photographs or anything and so you have to ask yourself then well what why is this what is it i mean surely everybody would be interested in our natural history you know there's pyramids here let's do start doing some excavating no you're not allowed to talk about it you're not allowed to do anything about it well there's something there's something fishy then isn't there seriously there's something <coughs> fishy going on and well, so the same thing happened to us then it's like the same thing like that describing the knowledge that was lost from the pyramids is going to be the same thing that our great grandkids are describing about the knowledge that we have that they lost because we know something that they won't if they if we continue to let you know censorship and all this happen and it's just going to keep getting worse the box that we're in will get smaller for our grandkids smaller for their great grandkids and keep getting smaller yeah but, and so you see, this is why uh, YouTube and Google, they want one question, one answer, because they, they are doing exactly what John Hurt was doing in George Orwell's 1984. They are rewriting history. And so by the time you have your uh, children and they have children and your granddad, then you can reflect upon the time when you used to be able to put in Google, oh, uh, I want to know about such and such and you get pages and pages of different stuff which other people put up in your grandchildren's world put in one question you're going to get one answer and that's it and it's going to come from one source this isn't a joke this absolutely isn't a joke this is absolutely how how it's going to be you know the biggest um, library in the world um in the uh, the days of the roman emperor uh, the roman empire sorry 
um, let's say a, about uh, 2000 years ago, I don't remember exactly when it was, there was um, a library in Alexand Alexandria in Egypt. And it was the biggest one in the world, and it had millions of scrolls and, and documents in there. Well, oh dear, it got burnt. You know, just like if you put libraries which got burnt, uh, Google it, and you'll see that there's been thousands of them all over the world. And so you, I've always thought, well, how do these libraries all burn down? You know, why isn't, you know, real extra measure taken to protect these most precious of, of documents? Well, you see, they're not burning down by happenstance. They're burning down for a very good reason. They're being burnt down by the people that want to pervert history because there's too much knowledge which goes back, which, which <coughs> tells us about our ancestors for 3,000, 5,000, 15,000 years. You see, there's been uh, excavations done uh, around the world, and uh, the, the latest one's been done in Turkey. It's called Gobekli Tepe, and it's been um, it's been estimated very, very closely that it's like twelve and a half thousand years old. Twelve and a half thousand years old. They reckon the pyramids is only three thousand years old. And look at the technology of the pyramids. It was far, far, far greater than this technology, which was 12 and a half thousand years ago. These pyramids have been there a long, long time. And so they tell us, oh, it's only three and a half thousand years. And they were just built with copper tools and, um, you know, slaves pulling these rocks on, on, on wooden poles. Absolutely preposterous. And, and so just looking at that then. You can see that, that, that we've been under mind control for a long, long time. And so there's nothing new under the sun. Right. But I think the, I think the new thing is that we got to just be outspoken. We just got to speak. We got to speak up to it is the thing that needs to happen. Like, you know, we can come together now. They are trying to sense the, censor the Internet, but it, we still have the Internet. We still have a, 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 an ability to connect that they didn't have back then. They didn't have 3,000 years ago. They couldn't, they couldn't even connect to somebody that was 100 miles away. You know, like, <clears throat> we can connect and we're not even in the same, on the same continent, you know, and we can connect. So I definitely think that the fact that we can do this will help. Connection will help. Speaking about it will help. But we got to do more than talk about it. We got to do something about it, you know. And it's like, that's really what it comes down to, like, what can we do? You know, because it's like if this has been going on for 3,000 years, somebody like I've only been on this planet for 24 years. I'm 24. So it's like 24 it years. Your yeah. profile, you're 18 years old. <laughs> 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 but no, I'm just saying. Who like, are you, man? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> That's Holy funny. Smoke. Yeah. Um, yes. Okay. So. You know, uh, from my site, uh, the, the general thing that I've been promoting all the time is think for yourself. Don't believe anything anybody tells you. Think for yourself, do your own research, and get some balls about you, and stand up for whatever you believe. If you believe something, and if you consider it to be uh, founded um, based on good grounds and good information, research, and this, that, and the other, then that's it. And all I've been trying to to do is to promote thinking in so many various different ways because the greatest issue with mankind these days is that they can only think in one way in this very very narrow parameter of what they've been schooled into thinking and what the media has told them and anything outside of that parameter cause, causes them cognitive dissonance it causes a conflict in their mind because the information that they're in receipt of isn't what they've been told and then they get angry and they want to fight and they want to block you out and uh, they want to be nasty to you and all this sort of thing. It's a natural response when the egoic mind is under attack. Cognitive dissonance. You'll, you'll hear a lot of that in research in the future. That's what the world is under. It's under this uh, pressure which the powers that be have brought about because they've been telling you that the world is one way we've come from monkeys and if you say to them well where 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 are actually the the uh, stepping stones then well they can't find them 
the closest they can find is like three and a half million years ago. And it's kind of like, well, I mean, that's like four foot and it's, it's kind of like, you know, very monkeyfied and um, it, it doesn't look anything like the, the, the Homo sapiens. So, you know, where's the stepping stones? It doesn't stand up. Darwinism doesn't stand up. And so therefore then, you see, there's lots of people doing research about um, the Anunnaki, uh, the Nephilim. Have you, have you heard about uh, these entities? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this sort of thing. That, that, you know, my friend, my friend has actually told me a lot about like, those type of things, the Anunnaki and a little bit of the history and the conspiracy theories that he's learned about them. Yeah, and so the, the, there's more reality uh, probably to those than the, there is to Darwinism. And in actual fact, the, there's more evidence than there is to Darwinism because Darwinism is, is, is only a theory and it can't be proven because there is no evidence. There is no fossils found between one creature to the next. There absolutely has never, ever been found on the planet one fossil that uh, says, that, oh, this is halfway between a monkey and a man or halfway between a fucking lizard and the bird or you know anything like this never ever it's never ever happened it's just just a theory and so when you look at um the uh, cuneiform tablets that were found in sumeria that are four thousand years old they depict the stuff that goes on that was going on the fucking uh, that came from the stars and this that and the other and the fuck with our dna and uh, all this sort of stuff and so all this information is all suppressed and it's all poo-pooed um, because they don't want us to know any of that. And so, like you say then, um, to, to round this conversation up so it's not too long for the viewer, we need to be outspoken. We need to communicate and we need to keep a relationship um, with as many people as we can. And I know it, it, it takes time and it's tiresome. Um, and I spend, you know, a, a lot of my time these days Skype conversation or Zoom conversation because this is the greatest way that we're going to reach because with, with a few hours spent by ourselves, we can reach thousands of people. I, I hit three million views with my channel. So 3 million uh, people, wow, let's say 1 million people viewed my videos. So right. uh, I touched 1 million people. And this is what we've got to do. We, we've got to reach these people. And how we do it is by making just like one or two hour videos and banging them on as many platforms as we can to get it out there, get it all out there. Yeah. And just start communicating on a personal basis like we're doing now and keeping each other informed. And I'd like you to, you know, uh, post something on um, our site from time to time. If, if there's something that you think is really important that we, we should know about, then just request a, a, a Zoom chat with me or any of the other members. You know, they're all up for it. They're all, you know, intelligent enough and, and worldly enough that they're, they're all you know, the twice your age, uh, most of them, Mark. And, and so we've got a world of information. And so tap into it and, and use it and let's impart and, and let's grow from it. And that, that's, that's basically what, what I'm saying. Right. Definitely agree. And I definitely have, you know, I, I can do is blame myself, but like sometimes I get stuck in a bubble, but so does everyone else. But it's like, we just got to learn how to break out of that bubble and just connect, you know? And like, I guess it's that, it's that comfort zone that, that people get stuck in that comfort zone. They prefer comfort over reality or comfort over ha Like they think they mistake comfort for happiness or, you know, it's like we have to connect and that it's going to take to get out of our comfort zone to connect. But even, you know, because I remember the first conversation we had, it wasn't as easy for me as it is now. So it's like, it does just take, you know, repetition is the father of learning. So if you do it more than once, it'll just start getting easy and it'll just become normal, you know? Absolutely. I mean, you're, you're um, 24 now. And uh, so, you know, um, you're relatively starting out compared to lots of us that um, have been doing this. But it's people like you that are going to be taking this thing forward. And it's people like you that should have more energy and more contacts and um, be able to navigate um, easier through this matrix because you were born into it. Whereas people like me and people my age, we weren't born into uh, this matrix, anything like this degree. You know, we, 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 the internet didn't exist. You know, CDs didn't exist. Um, you know, we had records. You know, before you were born, mate, we had these fucking records and that's all we had playing on an old gramophone. And uh, it, we only had three channels on the television, you know, this sort of thing. 
yeah, it, it is wild. This, this was the, the, the real scarcity of information that we had. And we, we, we got our information from libraries, you know, from books and stuff. And so now it's so much easier. But you see, people have less time. When everything is so much easier, everybody just seems to be so busy. But this is what they've done, you see. They've got the, the, the world into such a frenzy whereby... They expect you to work all hours God sends because all they want you to do, they want you to keep in your slavery. They want to tie you out. And then when you get back to your home, the most you can do is tune in to CNN or Fox News uh, for a couple of hours and then fall into bed bollocks. That's what they want. They don't want anything else. And so we have to make time. We have yeah. to make time to talk to people instead of just watching YouTubes and, and this, that, and the other, because just gathering up in information isn't going to cut it. It's, it's expressing ourselves and communicating with real people these days because people have become so insular, so isolated, so shy. And how long have I been banging on at people? Come and Skype with me for years, Mark. How many people have I got in the site? relatively very very few a minuscule percentage of the people that viewed my videos and so this is what we're dealing with yeah we're just gonna have to get out of our comfort zone and just do it <laughs> yeah and so you're on the right track mate um uh, and your videos express that uh your freedom of speech and, and your desire and your energy and so i'm very happy to uh, have you as a member and um i'd like to communicate with you uh, on a more regular basis yeah. and uh, if you get the time then you know pick somebody else you'd like to have a chat with and just send them a message and let's keep this momentum going you know yeah, yeah, definitely. Because it's going to take momentum. Yeah, like movement. Yeah. Momentum. We have to gain. We have to gain something. Gain something that's you know going to keep it moving. So we're we're at a certain point in this momentum, and if you look at the graph, you know graphs, you know they go whatever like this. Right. You know, there's no telling where we are in on this momentum. But let's just say it's sort of like this, and. Over this past like 2,000 years, we've been crawling up here. And now I would think that we're seriously getting to about there because we're getting to the point whereby as soon as we get to this point, if we've not got our shit together, it's all downhill from there on. There ain't no returning from that point because we've given them too much control. We've allowed them to chip us. We've allowed them to take our babies away into institutions so we can't even parent them, them ourselves. It's, we're fucked. So therefore then, there is, there's a great urgency and we can feel the urgency. And the urgency is becoming greater and greater. And you can feel it tangibly now on the internet as people are starting to panic now. Because it's like the, 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 the Nazis or whatever force, the, the tanks are only down the street. You can hear the fucking tanks. They're here. They're almost here. What are we going to do? We're not prepared. You know, have we got our dugout? Have we got our secret weapons? Have we got our, our fucking, have we done our prepping? Have we got our stash of food? No, we haven't. We fucked because we've been thinking, oh, it'll be all right. <laughs> right. And we're thinking it'll be all right because don't take care of it. It's like, no, we have to take care of it. We do have to take care of it. So people... It's, um, it's about preparation. And so I don't know whether you want to um, have this video and post it somewhere of, of your own choice, uh, Mark, to, to you know, help things out. Yeah. Um, if you do, then I can send it to you, and I'll send it to you via Sprend. Are you familiar okay. with Sprend? No, no, no. Okay, no. so it's a marvelous package. You just... Type in Sprend uh, on Google and uh, click download. It downloads <coughs> in about five seconds. It opens up as one window and it's got uh, the email you want to send this video to, the email it's coming from, which is yours, and a little box for some comments. You click send and then it's delivered in about 20 minutes, depending on the size of it absolutely fantastic and then you just you've got it to do whatever you want and so I'll, I'll do that for you mate okay yeah definitely look that up and but. so I'll, I'll um I'll, I'll send that over to you and then um you know like I say just um 
you know, put it on whatever platform you, you deem appropriate because um, we, we've just got to get conversations like this out, aired, to give more people inspiration into thinking, yeah, fuck, I, I can do that. I've right. got something to say. I'm, I'm angry enough or scared enough to start talking now. And, right. or I, I've, I'm confident enough to start talking now because other people are. And at the end of the day, if we don't, then the, the future's bleak. Seriously, the future is very, very bleak. So on that note then, may or mates, finally we um, actually got round to talking to each other. Right. And, um, really appreciate your time. I really appreciate you, man, because uh, it's definitely going to take us all to come together and do this. And uh... By the way, I, I saw a comment that uh, you did um, uh, in support of me against that idiot um, troll that um, is trolling everybody. <laughs> if you remember, it was on Reddit. Um, it probably, probably, was, I don't know how long ago you put yours, but he put his uh, thing there about um, four months ago. And so you, you were saying that, you know, you, you um, consider me a friend and you, you like what I do and this, that and the other. And so I appreciate that, mate. Yeah, no, I really do, though. That's real, though. For real. Because it's, it's interesting, the thing with the Internet, that we can have friends that we've never even been in a room together. Yeah. And it's feeling this level of vibration. You know it's right, I know it's right. And so as long as we both know it's right, think it's right, then it has to be right for us. Right. Yeah, exactly. And so whatever any other idiot wants to say, then you know, we're all entitled to our own opinion. Mm -hmm. and, and so um, there you have it. Um, so viewer, this is uh, Mark Cubensis, as he will um, now be known as. I'll change that on your profile. And um, we'll take it from here, yeah? All right. Brilliant. So have a great day, mate. Yep, and uh, whatever, you, whatever you're going to do. And um, we'll be in communicado as and when. Well, have a good day. Cheers, bud. I don't know how to exit out, though. Yeah, it's a difficult one, actually. Um...